All right, so let's work on a different air-cooled heatsink, which in this case is going to uh, remedy uh, a hotspot, which is a localized high temperature area on the uh, heat, uh, on the chip. Like the green area I've shown in here is where the hotspot is going to be on the bottom surface of the uh, heat sink, which has more powered or heat flux generated or input to it compared to the background. I have given the dimensions of this example that I'm going to be doing in console today. Uh, 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters in each direction. It's a square base again and the thickness is 10 millimeters. The height of the fins are 15 millimeters uh, and also the pins, pins in the middle, are on the hot spot. And then we have some other dimensions shown in here. I'm going to refer to as I'm doing my model so um, it, it's easier to uh, refer to this instead of memorizing them and then if I look at the 2d view I have again a 10 millimeter thick base and 50 millimeter long fins I have the middle fins and pins and then the side or background fins just two millimeters uh, wide and 50 millimeters uh, long which runs through the entire um, heat sink so with that let's go to console so click on Model wizard takes me to space dimension, which is going to be 3D. And then I'll go to, uh, let's instead of heat used or recently used, let's go, go into the physics here. I'm doing a heat transfer in solids. So I'll double click in that, like the previous air cooled problem that we did. And then in the study, I'm only interested in steady state solutions. So I'm going to pick stationary. If I double click in this and then wait for it I'll be taken to the main window and console again I want to change the units uh, of length into millimeters it's easier so I'm gonna change that and then I'm gonna define some parameters so for the base of the heatsink which was a square I'm gonna give 50 millimeters and that's the base width let me actually make it bigger so I don't need to scroll left or right I'm gonna say TB for the base thickness and that was 10 millimeters again we can change that as needed then I have the L of F and P that's the, the fin and pin height which was 15 millimeters they were the easy parameters I can remember. Then we had the dimensions of the the fins, which are two millimeters in the um, uh, width and fifty millimeters in the length, which is the same as the base. So I'm gonna call W of fin two millimeters, and I'm gonna call fin width. Then we have the W of the pins, which is also the same, but I'm going to change it over here just for the sake of making sure if we want to change it in our, uh, our models later on, I can change it over here. So that's also two millimeters, which is now the square pin width. Uh, the spacing between the fins, so I'm going to call it SF, was also two millimeters. I'm going to call it 2mm. And that's the fin spacing. And the spacing between the pins is, if I look at here, is one millimeter. So two millimeters in uh, the width and length, let's call it, and then one, milli one millimeter spacing for the fins. So I'm gonna, pins, I'm gonna call it SP is one millimeter. And that's the pin spacing the only thing I need to define now the other thing is um, the length of the shorter fins over here which are 13 millimeters so I'm gonna call that um, uh, L it's called s 13 millimeters and that's the short fin uh, length let's call that so 
I think with that we have all the dimensions that we need. Um, so we can go ahead and try to solve this. The only thing, the only other thing I might want to do is in here is to say this is a uh, seven by seven array, and this is a four uh, array of. Uh, if I look at the next slide, see so that I have four background fins and then uh, seven hotspot fins. Let's actually define those as well. So N B is four number of uh, background fins and then n h was seven this is the number of hotspot pins so we can use that in our arrays now I have all the parameters defined again this is an optional thing uh, but later on it will help if I want to change any of these and accordingly change my geometry. So in the geometry, the first thing I want to do is to design the base. Again, I can do a block simply and give it the values. So it was WB and WB and TB. And I want to put the bottom left corner of my base at the uh, uh, at the zero uh, at minus W two WB two minus WB two and zero, so that the center point of the bottom face of the heatsink would be at 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to call this minus WB over 2 and minus WB over 2. This is not necessary. I'm just doing it out of my own preference. So if I click this, build selected, and do this, now I have my the base selected or created. Now on the top surface, I have a little bit more work to do than the previous problem. If I look at it, the top surface, I have uh, the background fins that I have to create and then I have these uh, the other fins, the smaller fins, and I have the pins in the middle. Alright, so how do we take care of that? Let's first make the background fins which are easier, like similar to what we did before. Uh, so if I do that, or I can go to console, the first thing I have to do is to design a um, working model or work plane uh, to create my 2D geometries and then extrude them. So click on work plane and I'm not going to do it quick, I'm going to do a first par face parallel on here and then I click plane geometry to go into the 2D model. So for the rectangle uh, for the backgrounds I'm going to say WF and the length is going to be WB and the corner again similarly is going to be at minus WB divided by 2 and minus WB divided by 2. If I build selected, uh, I have the first one here. Now, I want to make four of these fins in the X direction with the spacing of uh, WF and SF. So to do that, I click on Transform and select Array. I'm arraying this or copying this four times or N B if I called it correctly it's called M B and the spacing is going to be W F plus S F if I do this I have four of them created over here then if I go back to my geometry I see that there is a one millimeter spacing from this fourth um, from the fourth uh, fin with the shorter fins, right? So this is there's a one millimeter spacing. So in order to take care of that, I can create a short fin and I one, two, three, four fins or long fins and one, two, three uh, channels in between that. So let's see what I can do here is I can create a rectangle. Uh, the length is or the width is W of I think W of F and the height was 13 I think I have it here LS right so I'm gonna call it LS and the corner is gonna be one two three four and then one two three so four or, or NB times WF plus 
nb minus 1 times sf plus 1. You don't need to do this. If you want to just put the numbers, you can do that. But then if I change anything in the parameters, that will be changing over here accordingly. So if I do this, actually I did the corner, I should have done it minus that. Uh, so what have I done here? So one, two, three, four, let's make it the negative number. So it should probably be working properly. So I might have made a little mathematical mistake. So, all right, so, okay, I, I, I figured out what I did wrong. So that is minus WB over two plus all of these. So if I do that, and then the Y, I forgot to make, change this one. The Y should gonna be at minus WB divided by two. Right, so now that I figured out where to put this, the next step is to make an array of this in the uh, in the X direction. And we have seven of that. So I can say, give me an array of this. In the X direction, I have NH. And the spacing between that is gonna be W of F plus S of F. If I come back here, actually W of P and S of P, uh, not not F, so W of P and S of P. So if I click in that, I have seven of them created here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the spacing is also correct. So um, the next step is to create the pins, the ones in here. So there are two by two, and I have to be careful about the spacing. So uh, I know that this is 20 by 20 millimeters squared. So this length is 20 and this length is also 20. And the center of my heat sink is at uh, X equals zero and Y equals zero. So that makes life easier. So this, this should be minus 10, uh, minus 10, I imagine. So for that, I'm gonna create a square. That's the length is gonna be WP and the corner is gonna be at minus 10, minus 10. So if I do that, that is where the first one is created. Now, what I wanna do is to create seven of this in the X direction and seven of that in the Y direction in an array. So I come to transform an array and then I click this one, say NH and NH. And in both directions, the spacing is going to be WP plus SP, WP plus SP. And if I select build selected, now all of the fins or pins in the center are created. Now, what I have to do to complete this 2D design is to mirror these shorter fins about the Y direction or in the Y direction and mirror the longer fins in the X direction. So let's do that. In the transform, I come to mirror. And the first thing I wanna do is to copy all these four in the X direction. And here by default in the X direction, the center is gonna be over here. So I'm, I'm safe in terms of the, the coordinates of the point. Now what I wanna do here is a thing that you might miss. And I miss a lot when I do my models and I have to come back and fix it. I'm gonna show you what happens. If I say build selected, you see my original ones disappeared, now I have only the new ones. Because by default, this keep input op objects is disabled. So you enable it and then you say build selected. Now you have all of them created properly, right? Uh, then I wanna mirror these uh, shorter fins. So I have to do the same thing again, transform, mirror, and then I can select these fins, or if I'm smarter, I can just do select box and select those fins. And this time I am mirroring about the Y axis. So XW is zero, YW is one, and build selected, make sure that I have this enabled. And that's that. So I have created the, um, the pattern. If I come to work plane, again, I see nothing is showing here, but if I say build selected, that comes handy. Now, having done that, the next step is to just extrude these 
uh, at the length that I had given earlier, that was 15 LF. So click extrude and then give the length LF and then build selected and zoom all. That is the heatsink. Now, before I move forward, I, like I said, there's going to be a hotspot on the bottom surface of the base. So to do that, uh, I need to create another work plane on the bottom surface. So I create a um, work plane. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do do it quick. I'm just going to do a face parallel on this face. And over here in the plane geometry, I'm going to create a square. Uh, I forgot to give the dimensions, so I'm just going to just type numbers in here. I'm, in this case, I will be making an excuse. Minus 10 and minus 10 is where the heat sink is going to or hotspot is going to be. If I click build selected, you see that it's all it's covering the entire uh, pins. Come back up top again, build selected and the hotspot is also there. So the next thing I have to do is just to build all so that console takes care of the uh, overlapping areas like in the bottom surface of the heat sink. You see that the hotspot and the background are different and that's what I would have to do manually in other FEA programs. Having done this, the next step is the materials. I don't have a material defined, so I add material from library and I select, again, I want to select copper first. And that's going to be applied to the entire heat sink. So having done this and knowing that the materials is probably defined and knowing that the heat sink is, uh, or the heat transfer in solids is covering the entire domain. Let's make this window a little bit bigger now not that small let's also make this one a little bit smaller so i have space over here let's define the boundary conditions and loadings the first thing i want to do is the uh, loading in the hotspot so let's do that it's a boundary so i'm going to create heat flux with the boundary so click that select the boundary and give a watt of um let's call this one uh 20 watts for the sake of uh, a not very efficient heat sink, we don't want to have very high temperatures. And for the background, again, I want to create another heat flux. I want to select these, this background. And for the background, I'm going to give a higher uh, watt, like 30 watts. And you might be thinking like, why is it that the uh, here we have lower watts, 20, whereas for the second heat, uh, heat flux, I have the higher watt. Well, I'm looking when I when I talk about uh, hotspot in the background, I'm talking about watt per meter squared, and instead of de calculating the area and dividing it or anything else, I, I leave that to console. I just say that if you divide 20 by the smaller area, it's going to be more heat flux per squared meters than uh, or meter squared than the background, as you will see when we, we're done with the simulation. The next step is to the uh, design or define the convection conve convection heat transfer of the fins so if i look at the xz plane uh, again i will have to create a heat flux and for these i just do select box go all over here and just make sure that i'm i've selected everything properly i'm going to leave it as that and here with the options i'm going to say this is a Convective heat flux, it's a free convection. Give it 24 for the uh, uh, coefficient and the temperature, I'm gonna leave it again at room temperature, 293 degrees Kelvin. So with that, uh, let's also save this. So I can come back to this later. So air-cooled heat sink, um, let's call it with hotspot and say save. And then let's mesh this one. So I'm going to do a uh, uh, fine mesh. I'm not going to do very fine because it might take too long to solve. I don't know how long it's going to say it's going to take. But for more realistic problems, I will make this finer mesh. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to stay at fine and do build all, and then see what happens and how many. So this is what I get. Let's make it finer a little bit, so it looks nicer in terms of the element shape. But again, more better way is uh, 
making hexagonal elements than uh, tetrahedral elements. So for the sake of an example, this is fine. Uh, I can make it finer and stay longer waiting for the simulation, but this is okay. And if I look at the description, it says uh, 15,176 boundary elements are selected or created and 39,916 domain elements are created. So with that, we're ready to do our calculations. So I do study and compute and wait for it to finish. So if I extend this in the log, it's telling me what's going on in the progress. Again, I lost time. It only took eight seconds. Um, so this time uh, we have this. And again, let's change the temperatures into, or, or, the, uh, or the look of it into rainbow, which is uh, conventional with the previous ones. That's how I was trained to see these. So now I have this kind of temperature, uh, but this is the colors. Again, you can show this in presentations, but you really want to give a more powerful or more professional presentation. So for that, I want to get the temperatures, the maximum temperature of the hotspot and the minimum temperature in the uh, background. So let's call it the derived variables for maximum for the surface. And I'm going to pick this surface. And I want to also create or uh, have a value for the minimum of another surface. So the way I do is I right click on the derived values and then I come to minimum, 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 maximum, average or integration. So in this case, I'm going to look for the minimum temperature of the background. So I can call this um, hotspot max temp. Let's call this one uh, background min temp. Okay, so if I right click here and then evaluate in a new table, see that the temperature is in degrees, Kel it's in Kelvin, I don't want Kelvin. Okay, so I didn't have to give the, the bracket. So 98.257 is the maximum temperature of the um, hotspot and the minimum temperature, I want to give it in the same uh, place as the uh, uh, in the same table as the maximum temperature. So I'm going to just do it like here. And there's a, well, actually, I forgot this one too, should be dig three Celsius. So let's erase a table, do this again, evaluate this one, and then right next to it, evaluate this one. So there's about like a one degree or even less temperature difference between the background and the hotspot. And that's probably because of the heat fluxes I gave over here. So let's make it, this is 20 and this one is 30. Um, so let's make it like 25. Um, that's probably because of the areas and everything else. Let's solve it again and see the temperature difference. It just takes a little bit of time and should be fine in a few seconds. All right, so I'm gonna erase the table and let's take a look at the maximum and minimum temperatures of the chip. So here is 90.53 and on the background I have 89.73, right? So these are the temperatures I can get from this heat sink. But let's again come back here in the parameters and make the, the base thinner. So I'll make it five millimeters, then build all. Right now it's a different heat sink. And um, let's make sure that everything else is properly defined. This is the hotspot, so the background, and these are where the convection is gonna happen. Let's remesh this newly modeled heat sink. Takes a little bit, it's done. If I can take a look at it, uh, closely. Again, I would make the mesh finer if I were doing for a more professional or technical study, but here is just the case of showing you how to do this. Let's rerun the simulation and wait for it to complete in a few seconds. Now I have different temperatures. Now again, in the same table, because as a comparison, I want to add the 
temperature, the max temperature, and the minimum temperature. And this one did not change as much. So we can try even further decreasing the, uh, the thickness to 2.5. See what happens if we keep increase, decreasing the thickness of the base. So redo everything or build all and then uh, mesh it again and wait for it to complete. And then let's run the study once again. And in, in a little bit, we should see the results. And once again, I want to come here and without cl clearing the previous calculations, I want to say, put that over here. Well, it didn't actually do as much help in the calculations. But let's actually uh, pay attention to this, that the, the mesh is not as fine as it should be. So let's make the mesh a little bit finer, or extra fine, and build all, and then see if the results would be a bit different. That's the effect of meshing. So now this is a finer mesh. It's going to take a little bit longer to calculate. So um, I'm going to do that. And this is something you would do for convergence analysis to make sure your results are converging. Uh, it's going and it's taking about a little bit longer. But now let's see how this new temperature might be different from the previous temperature. Well, not by much. So the mesh is actually fine. And this is just the performance of this air-cooled heatsink. So I can uh, then get this uh, minimum temperature of the background as well. And it shows that it's not that different from the previous models. So this heatsink is not a uh, good heatsink uh, for, for chips with uh, localized high temperatures or hotspots. And we'll have to, for these cases, we'll have to switch to uh, for example, uh, water-cooled heat sinks with more advanced uh, and better convection heat transfers from them. So I'm going to end the video here, and in the future videos, we're going to look at some of the water-cooled heat sinks suitable for uh, chips with hotspots in them.